name's Sinclair Park, I'm from Planet Lighting, and I'd like to introduce you to the Mini Puck. The Mini Puck is a small anodized aluminium component containing a high power LED, uh, polycarbonate lens, and it's fully sealed. And the Mini Puck is an integral part of the handrail lighting system, otherwise known as the HLS. And the HLS is this it's a handrail, any handrail, any metallic handrail, uh, and we, we drill uh, and tap holes into the handrail and the mini puck is inserted in and the power is reticulated through the rail. The whole idea of this system is that it provides uh, an invisible light source to any path or stair that you might need to illuminate. Um, its big advantages over pole top lights is that it's very efficient light source so there's no wastage of light, no light spill and more importantly no glare. Um, it's rated for 50,000 hours, 70% lumen maintenance, so it's an uh, incredibly long life, low maintenance system. Uh, it's vandal resistant and it looks like this when it's on. Uh, and the idea is it's set at about 30 degrees off horizontal so that uh, it, the light shines down onto the path, uh, but there's minimal uh, glare or waste of light. The mini puck comes in two flavours, standard, also known as shouldered, which is potted with clear silicon, and thin wall, also known as non-shouldered, which is potted with white silicon. The standard mini puck is suitable for wall thicknesses greater than 2.5mm or 0.1 inches. The thin wall mini puck is suitable for wall thicknesses greater than 1.5mm or 0.06 inches. Measure the wall thickness of your pipe. Ensure it is suitable for the type of mini puck you're installing. Refer to the manual for appropriate pipe thicknesses and to your job specification. This video will show you how to install Planet HLS mini pucks. Installing the standard shouldered puck is a five step process. Step one, clamp the drill jig onto the tube. Step two, drill the hole with the 15mm bit. Step three, rebate the hole with a 16mm bit. Step 4, tap the hole with an M16 by 1 tap. And step 5, inspect and clean the hole. For thin wall, non-shouldered pucks, step 3 is left out. Thin wall pipes don't have enough material to rebate. If you were to accidentally rebate a thin wall pipe, there would be no steel left to tap. Please watch this video and use the tools supplied. No matter how much experience you have, we found that following our system precisely will ensure you save time and eliminate errors. If you have little experience drilling stainless steel, please see the section in the manual. Before getting started, check that you have all the parts in your toolkit. Use the laminated kit guide that you'll find beneath the plastic coolant bottle. If anything is missing or damaged, please contact Planet Lighting or your distributor. The drill jig consists of four parts. The main body that clamps onto the handrail, a threaded section where the drive nut screws on, a spigot for coolant delivery, and a hole for the coolant drain hose. The coolant drain hose connects into the main body of the drill jig, allowing waste coolant to drain into a waste bucket. The coolant delivery bottle is a pressure vessel for delivering coolant to the drill jig. It consists of a bottle, a flexible hose, and a delivery nozzle at the end. The driver nut is used to provide a slow and steady driving force for the drilling procedures. Three arms attach to allow for greater control during the drilling process. The driver nut screws on to the main body of the drill jig. The spacer bushes are used to set the depth of the rebate depending on pipe size. There are five bushes corresponding to handrail diameters of 40 to 60 millimeters in four millimeter steps. The spacer bush slides onto the 16 mil cutter. Two clamps. These are used to clamp the drill jig onto the pipe at the required angle. A spirit level used to set the angle of the holes and ensure they are accurate and consistent. A file used for dressing the holes where necessary. The insertion tool. 
This is a unique tool used to screw the mini pucks in once the holes are drilled and tapped. The drive adapter connects the drill with the tools. Two metric Allen keys. If any of the tools become damaged or blunt, use the Allen keys to change it, selecting the corresponding tool from the supplied spare parts. The drilling process is a two-person job. Hole centres are nominated in the job specification and must be determined before marking out. Using the tape measure, mark precisely where drilling is to occur. The mini pucks will be installed at a specified angle, typically 30 degrees off vertical, pointing down and inwards towards the area or path to be eliminated. Mix the coolant and pour it into the plastic bottle. Screw the coolant drain hose into the outlet hole of the drill jig. Put the other end in the bucket. Then attach the coolant nozzle to the delivery spigot of the drill jig. The jig has an alignment mark to ensure the hole is drilled on the marked centre. Align the mark on the drill jig with the marked spot on the handrail. Loosely clamp the jig to the handrail using one of the two clamps supplied. Position the level on the main body of the jig and slowly rotate the jig until the nominated angle is found. Tightly clamp the other side of the jig and then tighten the first clamp. Finally, pump the coolant delivery vessel to build up pressure. Attach the driver socket to the drill. Ensure the drill bit and jig are free from swarf and dirt. Insert the 15mm drill bit. Insert it gently to avoid damaging the bit. Screw the drive nut onto the jig. Continue screwing gently until it stops and back off half a turn. Attach the drill. Release the coolant supply valve. Start the drill and tighten the driver nut, making sure the pressure is steady and continuous. Otherwise, the drill could polish and work hard in the steel as it is turning. Once the hole is cut, stop drilling. Close the coolant supply valve, ensure your bucket is under the jig to catch the swarf, unscrew the driver nut and remove the drill bit. Check for swarf, clean the bit and replace on a clean cloth. Be sure to skip this step if you are using thin walled pucks. Use the 16mm bit with the correct spacer bush fitted. Gently insert it into the jig. Screw the drive nut onto the jig until it stops and back it off half a turn. Switch on the coolant. Start the drill and tighten the driver nut. Only a couple of turns of the drive nut are required once cutting begins. You'll know when you've reached the end when the driver nut begins to resist turning. Stop drilling and switch off the coolant. Ensure your bucket is under the jig to catch swarf. Unscrew the driver nut and remove the drill bit. Check for swarf clean the bit and replace on a clean cloth. For this there is no need to fit the collar and the hole can be tapped using either a drill or a spanner. Coolant is not needed for this step. Carefully insert the tap into the jig. Start tapping by applying upward pressure to the tap 
and turning by hand or using a drill very slowly. Screw the tap in all the way until it runs freely, ensuring the tap doesn't run all the way to the other side of the pipe. Unscrew the tap and remove. Check for swarf, clean the tap and replace on a clean cloth. Remove the drill jig and check for burrs. If there are any present, carefully dress the hole with the file. You may find that the rebated holes need little or no dressing. Remove the marking tape. Run a mini puck into the hole to ensure it is correct. <laughs> 